What's going on everybody? It's your boy. I'm back, got another video for you. Now, in the last video, we took a look at the Creative Sound Blaster Play device, which has smart comps so you can use a standard headset and improve your audio quality on conference calls, Discord, things like that. Today, taking a look at this guy. This is the LiveCam Sync 1080p version 2 from Creative, and it has the same smart comps kit built into this webcam, and it's up here right now, as a matter of fact, and I'm doing a little camera A, little camera B action with that guy the whole time with smart comps kit turned on. Now I will go ahead and talk about it, and we're gonna dive into some of the features of it, and let's discuss it from two lenses. One, we're gonna look at it as streaming setup for gaming, and number two, we're gonna take a look at it and we're going to view it through the lens of a communication device for like a Zoom meeting, right? So not necessarily like a little webcam corner, but like we're gonna talk about video quality, we're gonna talk about audio quality, we're gonna talk about the things that people look for in a budget-oriented webcam. So at the time of making this video, this retails for $59.99. It's available on Creator's website. I'll leave a link down below. All right, let's talk about a few of the features. So it's 1080p, obviously, it says it in the, uh, in the name of the product, uh, but it does not shoot 60 frames a second. Now my C922, does shoot 60 frames a second. However, that does use more bandwidth. And if you've been using Zoom and Google Meets during this whole work from home thing, I'm sure if you have one of those cameras, you're not able to utilize it because, hey, the bandwidth doesn't really support it because so many people are, are on there now. I think it caps you to 30 frames a second max. All right, so what's included in the package? Pretty much just the webcam. We've got some manuals. Go ahead and open it up. You get all your normal Creative International warranty, your little support cards, all that stuff. The cable on here is six feet long, which is really nice. Gives you plenty of room to position it wherever you'd like on your setup at home or at the office. So a big trend in recent years has been privacy caps or privacy screens on laptops or on webcams. Creative didn't miss the boat with that. They slapped a privacy cap right on the front. It's old school. It's flip down, flip up, but it does the job well. Now I found the 77 degree field of view on the webcam to be useful, especially in a small environment where I'm at right now. It doesn't have so much field of view that it sees your entire space behind you, but it does a good job balancing your position where you're seated and working to taking up a lot of the frame for when people are looking at you in meetings. And of course it does support any of the plugins that your webcams would support in Zoom or third party applications. Now, in order to get the smart comms kit to work, you do have to install some software from Creative. We're gonna talk about that when we hop onto the desktop. All right, so here we are on the webcam. So those of you wondering about video quality, here you go. We are on the webcam and you're hearing me on the smart comms kit. And right now, Smart Comms Kit's turned on, it's just set to automatic. Now Smart Comms Kit is turned off. Nothing else in the room or environment has changed, just turn Smart Comms Kit off. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say a little phrase and you get to hear it with it on and with it off. So we're gonna say, hell yeah, brother, with the Smart Comms Kit turned off. Now a Smart Comms Kit turned on, it's hell yeah, brother. And now just with the lavalier mic, you're just gonna hear, hell yeah, brother. Now you can hear in the background that I've got a fan on with the Smart Comms Kit off. Right now you can hear that whine, that drone. And even on the view meter, it's fairly loud. When I turn Smart Comms Kit on, now nothing's changed. I'm just turning the Smart Comms Kit on and off. With all three of those, you can kind of hear the difference in the background noise on, the, on each mic and the pros and cons. This is very close proximity, so it's going to have very tight dynamics, and you're gonna have a little bit of room noise even with the Smart Comms Kit turned on, but it's greatly reduced than with it off, as you'll hear right now just the room reflections from my voice in this room it's noticeable and the smart comms kit does a great job at reducing that background noise okay so now what i'm going to do is we're going to go onto the desktop and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the software so here we go okay so here we are on the desktop and i'm down in the bottom right hand corner I, all i did is crop the edges in in obs i didn't do anything else to change the aspect ratio just to give us a little bit more screen real estate so i can show you all of this so when you install the software and everything boots up, you've got this right here. You're greeted with the software interface. You've got your mixer so you can change the levels, balance left and right, super straightforward. Smart comms kit, as I said, it's turned on. We do have advanced features. You can change the voice detect, auto adjust, noise clean out. Now this doesn't have noise clean in uh, to where it cleans up other people's audio. So that is a difference between the, this device and the play device. The play device cleans up other people's audio on your end because you know, you your speakers are running through the entire device. This does not support that, but who knows? Maybe in the future with the software update, it could. Now you'll notice in the voice to text settings, you can change how loud your voice is. Unfortunately, it's just three clicks. It's soft, medium, and loud, which for most people is going to be fine. Uh, environmental noise, you can turn it to loud, which is kind of my use case or medium, which is my use case right now. If I turn it to soft, it still does a good job with the fan, but I feel like you do get a little bit more reflection from the walls if you have uh, the environmental noise turned to soft. 
We're going to go ahead and put that back to loud. Mic delay, this is just how long the software waits before muting your mic when it detects your voice. So right now I have it set to one second. And it mutes a little bit faster. If I turn this guy all the way up to four seconds or five seconds and I stop talking. There it goes. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at the view meter in OBS to make sure that the timing's all right. But yeah, it takes about five seconds for it to mute and that's all customizable or you can just leave it on automatic and it does a great job. Noise clean out is the same kind of thing that just reduces background noise. Now this has a lot more granularity. You can slide it, leave it on auto adjust. It's fantastic. Honestly, it works really freaking well. I just leave it on auto on a rip. Now in here, you can change your recording rate, your audio rate. From, it's all 16-bit, no 24-bit, which is fine. 16,000 hertz up to 48,000 hertz. Technically, this one right here, 16 bits, 44, 100 hertz. That one is CD quality. So it comes out of the box, I believe, on 4,800 hertz. Change it if you have audio issues. Here's your flicker control. This is the one I was talking about. Now, out of the box, it came set up at 50 hertz. Now, I just changed it to it. It might take a while for it to show up on the little camera, the little preview I've got down here in the bottom corner but it will eventually start to develop a flicker, almost like a banding effect. And that's just because you've got a mismatch in the power frequency of the light above it and the webcam shutter. Uh, and then just application updates, things like that. It's really straightforward in here, guys. It's not, not rocket science. It's pretty honest and straightforward. Uh, you do need admin rights, you know, like I said, if you're buying this for work to take advantage of these more advanced features like noise clean in, you do have to install some software. So just keep that in mind if you're doing this on a work computer. I know a lot of people have run into that. Make sure your sysadmins know, hey, I, I need this. Or, or your, your IT people know that, hey, this is a safe software. It's creative. It's, it's not something that's going to mess up a system. And the install was very lightweight. The issues I had with the previous device where the installs well, you know, where I did the install and I downloaded one file, then did, and then it downloaded another, and then did an update. That didn't seem to be the case with this. It was one driver and we were done. Uh, and, or in one application uh, install, and we were good to go. Yeah, that, that pretty much sums it up. So here we're going to go ahead and we're going to do like a, a streaming scenario, like a gaming scenario where you get to see how the webcam looks, kind of what we've got here. Um, but I'm going to leave the mic on here, and I'm going to use the lavalier mic in and out of uh, games so you can hear the audio both ways. So this is the ambient noise level in this room according to the built-in mic. That's what we've got, we're working with here. And I've already listened to a few samples from the other night just to give it a test. And I'll save you guys from it by turning it off here in a second. Turn that smart comes kid on. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> Sorry, team. Doing a review here. All right, so what do I think of this device? Well, pros, it's relatively affordable. The Smart Comms Kit does clean up a noisy environment as we saw in the demonstrations. It works very well for that. Picture quality is pretty good. It's got a little bit too much digital sharpening, but for the price, I think it does a good job balancing all the features for what you're paying for. I don't feel like you're paying so much for a Zeiss branded lens, which yes, it's clear on, on other cameras that do have that, but you're, you're getting better audio quality in addition to really nice, clean, and sharp and accurate video. And the low light on this camera is actually really good. I was very surprised. Now, some of the cons, I wish that the software, when you installed it, auto-detected your region and set your power line adjust, that's your 60 and 50 hertz refresh rate on the camera. I wish it would have adjusted that automatically. Not a big deal, but for a lot of people who aren't tech savvy, that might be a nuisance for them. 
having their camera strobe uh, when someone is viewing it, you know, on their end it flickers because your power coming in the house is 60 hertz and the camera's shutter rate is 50 hertz. You have a mismatch there and you can have strobing. Other than that, if you know what you're doing or if you saw in the video how I changed that, hopefully that helps you adjust that setting if you're encountering that. Now the smart comms kit doesn't work miracles. If you have audio running in the background with somebody talking or a t you know, you listen to a podcast on some speakers, it's gonna pick that up because it detects the voice. For things like ambient background noise, like a fan or the key, the computer, or even, yeah, keyboards to a point, it does a good job reducing that background noise just as advertised. Do I think it works as well as the Creative Play device? with your own headset with an inline mic? Not quite, but I think it's a fair compromise for what you get in the device because you're getting, like I said earlier, nice clear video, really good audio, and it lets you have all the features you need without spending a ton of money. And if you remember at the beginning of lockdown, the beginning of the pandemic, when we were all working from home, webcams were really scarce and they were very expensive. You were getting a less featured camera for almost double the money at the start of this. So it's nice to see that kind of come back down. Creative's got a great offering here. You should definitely check it out instead of going with one of the you know Logitech ones like a C-series webcam. Check this thing out. You won't be disappointed. The audio really, choice. All right, that's gonna do it for me up here. Thanks everybody. If you found this video useful, go ahead and hit subscribe. Leave a comment and tell me what you liked about it or what you didn't like it and I'll do my best to provide better content. As always, this is Chris. Thanks guys, have a great one.